Hello everyone. Today I talk about how to break down and simplify an unfamiliar circuit diagram. I do so by walking through an example op-amp circuit with a strange feedback network. Let's start by looking at the circuit. The first thing we can recognize is that it looks like an inverting amplifier configuration. Unfortunately, it's not obvious what the feedback resistance is. While we could use KVL and KCL to find the feedback resistance, I want to try a different method. We can recognize this circuit as a T-network of resistors in the feedback path. We can convert a T-network into a Pi network. Note that this transformation is also called a Y to delta transformation, and in general is called a star mesh transform. We can write the equations for the transformed resistors as shown. If I insert some resistor values into the original circuit, we can calculate the synthesized Pi network resistor values. Now we have a new circuit that honestly looks just about as complicated as the first. What was the point of all that transformation? Let's take a step back and look at a standard inverting amplifier. With the resistor value shown, the gain of the amplifier is minus 1000. For a 1 millivolt sinusoidal input, there is a 1 volt sinusoidal output. What happens if we attach a load resistor to the output? Well, it depends on if our op-amp is ideal or not. If it is ideal, the op-amp can source or sink an infinite amount of current, as the output is modeled as an ideal voltage source with zero output impedance. However, with a real op-amp, if the load resistance is too small, the op-amp can't handle the current needed to drive the load. We can see this on the plot shown, where the input is the same 1 millivolt sine wave as before. The output waveform for load resistances of 1, 5, and 10 ohm show that the op-amp is unable to properly amplify the input signal beyond a certain range. Once the load resistance is high enough, the op-amp can once again work as an amplifier. The main takeaway from this is once the load resistance is large enough, in this case over 50 ohms, the load resistance has a negligible effect on the amplifier. That means we can safely ignore the load resistor in our analysis. Very generally, most op-amps can provide around 10 to 20 milliamps maximum. If we look at RV, we can show a similar plot. Again, once the resistance is above a certain value, in this case about 100 ohms, it has no noticeable effect on the amplifier. This is a bit harder to explain, but if we look at the voltages at each end of the resistor, it may make sense. The bottom of the resistor is connected to ground, which is 0 volts. The top of the resistor is connected to the inverting terminal of the op-amp. The op-amp is in negative feedback, so the inverting and non-inverting terminals have the same voltage, at least ideally. For a real op-amp, there will be a small difference in voltages, but if RV is large enough, the current through it will be small. Small enough to be swamped out by the other currents in the circuit. If a resistor has no voltage drop across it, it can be treated as an open circuit and can be removed from the analysis. For reference, what we just did was call the voltage at the top of the resistor a virtual ground, aka a voltage that is close to zero volts, but isn't directly connected to ground. If you know what bootstrapping is, that's a similar concept and is what allows us to ignore RV. Passive components that have no voltage drop across them can be treated as open circuits. These concepts are a little advanced, so don't worry if you haven't dealt with them before. Now let's go back to our Pi network circuit. Do you notice anything? If not, let's redraw the schematic by rearranging the resistors a bit. Although at first glance it may not look like it, but these are the same circuit. Now do you notice anything? The 125 kilo ohm resistor in the box is a load resistor. We know that if the load resistance is high, we can ignore it from the analysis. If our voltage swing is minus 1 to 1 volt, there are only 8 microamps max flowing through the load, which op amps can easily provide. We can safely ignore this resistance. The other resistor in the box is bootstrapped by a virtual ground. For the same reasoning as before, we can ignore it. If we want to be really due diligent, we can calculate the frequency dependent open loop gain and calculate the current through the resistor, ensuring that it is low in magnitude compared to the other currents. But I won't show that in this video. Hence, look familiar? All along, our T network in the feedback loop was a 1 mega ohm resistor. As before, we can calculate the gain, which is negative 1000. Why did we do this? 
If you look at our original circuit, we have a single 1 kilo ohm resistor, a single 12.5 kilo ohm resistor, and two 100 kilo ohm resistors. Yet from those resistor values, we achieved an input impedance of 1 kilo ohm and a gain of 1000. We use smaller resistors to artificially synthesize a large resistance, and we're able to ignore the other resistors synthesized using op-amp characteristics. T-networks have a lot of other uses, including filtering and impedance matching, but in our case it enabled the creation of a 1 mega ohm resistance from values that in series only add up to 212.5 kilo ohms. As always, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video.